Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like all the leadership's up here, nobody's down here. And I guess kind of in a way, everybody's a leader. Right? Everybody's a leader. Well, let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we're so grateful to you. You're so good to us, Lord. You're so good to this church. You've you've supplied us so generously, Lord, and uh, we're just in awe of who you are and what you do week in, week out, and year in and year out, Lord, and we just can't wait to see what you've got next for this church. We're just anxiously anticipating your will to be done here, Lord, and uh, uh, we just can't wait to see it. So I thank you for all these uh, faithful friends, Lord, that you brought to this church and all those that uh, faithfully give uh, week in and week out and uh, how through their giving, Lord, you constantly supply all of our needs here. Lord, we're, we're humbled by your generosity. And as we meet together to talk about things here, about your church, Lord, we pray that you bless this time. Give us uh, the wisdom and insight that we need to be an encouragement to one another. Lord, we trust you. We trust your will. But Lord, bless this time that we have while we talk about the things of your church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Gosh, thank you so much, guys, for being here. And uh, and some of you that we don't see quite as often as others, I'm just blessed, blessed to have you, blessed to have you here. So um, a couple of things that are really uh, pretty clear right now, and that is things in uh, the world generally are loosening up a little bit after two years of COVID. Um, as you guys probably know, I'm not. Uh, not every church or every business survived the whole COVID thing. Um, I know a number of churches that shut down during COVID because they couldn't survive. And one of the great miracles, uh, and in my mind, proof of you know God's grace on this church is that through all of this COVID stuff, uh, this church has remained financially solvent. Uh, we've never missed a bill we paid every bill we have on time uh, throughout the entire process and that includes even the housing allowance that the church gives me uh, the board always has instructions that if we can't pay our bills then the one bill we don't pay is we don't pay the pastor's housing allowance because so i don't get a salary i think most of you know that i don't get a salary i have a job at work and um but I do get a housing allowance from the church, uh, and it covers most of the rent on our house, So, which we're really, really grateful for that. But during this time, we're still financially solvent because you guys gave and continue to give faithfully to this church. And um, with Samra uh, especially, and Craig handling the administration of this church, we're still in really good shape financially here. Um, we don't have as much in reserve as I would like to have in reserve. Um, our reserve has shrunk a bit, but it's still there, and we're still paying all of our bills. So we are financially solvent, not only now, we have been, and I believe we will be for the future. So I think that's a huge thing, a uh, big praise, because I believe, uh, and I've come to believe this, that God has some really amazing things in store for this church. I, I think this church, I, I've had this feeling for a while, this church has been kind of like standing on the brink of its next big step up. And that would be in, you know, in growth or in fruitfulness or in whatever it is that God wants to do with this church. I am 100% believing that God's got some things in store for this church that we haven't seen yet, uh, that I can only imagine uh, are going to take place in this church. And for that, I am very, very excited. The one thing that I am certain about right now is that my role as the pastor of this church is now coming to a close. After 20 plus years, of being the pastor here, the Lord is leading us onward and outward. And uh, I do not say this lightly. This has been something that we've been in process on um, 
probably for a couple of years now, and that uh, the Lord, um, you know, I, I always said that, you know, I don't ever get to do anything. I don't ever get to leave. I don't get to go anywhere unless the Lord lets me. And uh, so, um, Deb and I have been praying long, long years on this, and we are 100% convinced that God is calling us out and moving us onward, and uh, that the next steps that this church is going to take, the blessings that this church is going to experience, the fruitfulness, the growth, uh, is going to take place. It just won't involve me. Uh, now, I'm not saying that I'm hampering, hampering that growth. Maybe I am. I don't know. I, I, I'd like to think that. Um, but, I, but I do think uh, and, and, and firmly believe that my role as the pastor of this church is coming to an end. And I know there, you guys are going to have a lot of questions about that, and it's fine. You can ask them all. Uh, but I will kind of tell you the story just a little bit. Uh, about this. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, another, uh, and it doesn't make any sense to mention his name, but a good friend of mine uh, called me up and said, hey, you know, if you if you ever think that you're going to retire, I might be interested in, uh, you know, pastoring after you left, because he knows the church. And, and I thought, oh, Sorry. You know, I never, I never really thought about that. Now, now I can tell you this in all honesty. There have been many, many times in the last, well, I've been here for almost just about 23 years now, and the church is a little over 21 years old now. I can't tell you how many times in those years I just wanted to run away. Just run the opposite direction, you know. It's like I heard Alistair Begg say one time, he said, you know, every Sunday night I quit the ministry, and then every Monday morning I think, okay, I'm going to give it one more try, and uh, and so I, I totally understand that, and God has been faithful beyond anything that I can ever express to you in words, in in how He has been long suffering and patient with me and and my stupidities, and and certainly you guys as a church have been as well. Um, I even said. It, you know, earlier this morning, you know, at some point or the other, I'll, I'll let you down. And I'm sure at one point or the other, I probably let all of you down in one way or the other. I don't know. Um, but, but the fact remains is that uh, a seed got planted, and that was the idea that what I was doing here would at some point come to an end. I mean, it, it, you know, I, I could die, <laughs> you know, I mean, hit by a truck, and that's the end of it. Somebody else got to be pastor here. Um, but the idea of moving me on, what that seed was planted, and so, you know, I didn't do anything about it, and I just sat and I just prayed, and Deb and I talked about it, and we prayed, and then, for me, um, just again to let you guys know how things work with me, uh, I have other pastors in my life that I go and I talk to about the stuff that I'm going through, and. Um, you know, the pastor that ordained me down in Claremont, and then uh, Pastor Tim Brown, Calvary Chapel in Fremont, um, Pastor Bill Holdridge um, from Poiman Ministries, who's been a very, very good friend. Both Tim and Bill have been there for me, and I've had many long conversations with them about this very thing. And um, so they've been a great source of wisdom, guidance, talked me in off the ledge a couple of times. And uh, so this is not anything that we've done, um, you know, as a knee-jerk reaction to anything else. Now, let me also say this. I, I am not burned out as a pastor. I am not tired of being a pastor. I don't hate being a pastor. Uh, I, I don't hate pastoring this church. It's nothing like that at all. But as I have taught many, many many times in this church is for you for me is I follow the Lord you follow the Lord and I follow where he leads and right now he's leading me and Deb elsewhere now I'm not going to pastor another church that's not what's happening so it's not like 
somebody called me up and, you know, I got headhunted. You know, as a matter of fact, no one's ever done that. I don't know what that means. I'm trying not to take that personally. Um, but no one's ever wanted me except you. Um, I'm not even sure some of you want me, but you got me, nevertheless. So, uh, again, you know, I just want to keep reiterating to you that what we're doing is we're following the Lord. And we're not following our own interests, our own desires, although some of that is transpiring. What we're doing is we're following the Lord, and this is the Lord that is leading us on. So, secondary question, everybody, um, anybody that knows, the, the leadership is sitting up here because I've talked with all of these people about this too, is yes, we're going to be moving. We're not going to be living here in the area anymore. Um, we will be moving out of the state of confusion, the state of California, uh, and we are going to be moving to Nevada. So um, some of you know that we've taken multiple trips over there recently, and we weren't going over there uh, to gamble and to drink and to, and, 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 Where? And to party. Where uh, north Las Vegas. North. If you know where the strip area is, we'll be about half an hour north of that in an area that, in all honesty, it feels like we're right back in Southern California again. That's what it looks and feels like. And uh, so, yes, we purchased a house over there. Um, another part of it, just wanting to be as transparent as possible with all of you guys, one of the, one of the many factors that has made all of this possible is the fact that when my mom passed away, she left me a little bit of money. And then when my mom-in-law, my first wife's mom passed away, she left me a little bit of money too. So that means that we were financially able. So uh, let me share something else with you too. Um, a lot of people ask, not only about this situation, but in general, you know, how do you know? How do you know it's the Lord's leading? And I will tell you that we never, we never move or believe it's the Lord's leading based on one thing. You know, oh, we've got money. Now we can go do whatever we want. Uh, not that. You know, oh, um, you know, the door's open, I'm gonna run. You know, it, 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 it has to be, it has to be multiple things. And in this case, every, every part that we could possibly expect or want has fit into place very nicely. But the most important thing, of all, is for me and for Deb, because I know I can speak for her on this, is we have peace about it. And for all the things that fit, for all the things that don't fit, it doesn't matter if you don't have peace. And we have peace about this. I have peace about moving on because I believe that this church is going to prosper. Like I said, more than, than if I stay, because then I would be out of the Lord's will. You know, like when I when I started at Calvary Chapel in Riverside, which is now Harvest Christian Fellowship, there was like six, eight thousand people going there. After I left, it doubled. <laughs> and to, I, maybe that's a coincidence. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe my departure from that church doubled its size. I, you know, I don't know. Good, good to have it that way. So, so who knows what's going to happen here? So um, that's kind of the news. When? Okay, when? When is all this going to transpire? Uh, probably a little bit sooner rather than later um, uh, because there's a couple of things that we need to get in place, but sooner rather than later, um, I really hesitate to say anything about what that means because I just don't know. I could guess and say early summer, uh, which is coming up here pretty soon. Um, but I, I just don't know. So um, all of that said, one of the reasons too that um, I've got all the leadership up here with me is because all of these people so patiently and with an incredible grace and strength uh, have been supporting me in the process of coming to you now and sharing this. So what you're looking at up here is these are the people that God has put in leadership in this church just for this time. 
Uh, and one thing I can tell you without question in the history of this church is we've always had the exact leadership we needed at the right moment. And any of you that have been part of this church for a long time, like, like Kirk, for instance, um, you've seen leadership come and go, you know, over the years. We've had some, they're good, or some left, left. But we've always had exactly what we needed uh, at any given moment. And right now, this is the leadership that we need to see you, to see us all through this transition. So that's why they're here, and that's why you're looking at them, um, because these are the people that... Uh, in some of those times you may want to come to and say, hey, you know, I'm having trouble with this, or gee, I, I can't wait for him to leave, or, or something like that. So the leadership of the church is here just for that reason. And we are, we're all united on it. Y yes, we've, we've all shed some tears over this thing and, and all of that. And yes, and I get all of that because for, for most of us in this church, We've been through some stuff together. Uh, some of us have been through some really painful and difficult things together. Um, so, some of us not so much, because maybe you haven't been here quite so long. Um, but the fact is, is for a lot of us, we, we fought in some trenches together. And you know that you develop deep <clears throat> relationships over that. And, and that I don't take any of that lightly. So yeah, if you want to you know, be sad about it or be upset about it, that's fine. If you want to rejoice over my departure, I ask you to keep that on the deck. I'm not to be quite so verbal about that part of it, you know, keep that to yourself. Um, but uh, it, that's okay. And, and so these are all people that you can look to uh, in those times because they're all going through their process too because I've got I've got deep relationships with everybody that's up here. And, uh, and so they're going through their own process of having to think, okay, well, gee, you know, ding dong, the witch is dead. Now, now, you know, can, can we get out of here? Um, uh, or, or, gee, you know, we, we, we love Brian, obviously. Um, <laughs> what's not to love? We love Brian. But wow, what's going to happen now? Well. You know, part of what the leadership for the church is here to be and to do is to walk with us all together through the process. And, and that's the whole point of it. Uh, so when you look up here and you see all these good and godly people up here, that's why they're here, uh, to walk us through that. So um, all that being said, and I'm sure I could think of something else to say, let's take questions whatever questions you might have i will do my level best to answer them if you don't want to ask me you can ask anybody that's up here but um, do you have any questions right now about this yes do you know who will replace you yet well considering that i'm irreplaceable <laughs> you know that everything we, we we contacted billy graham but i can't <laughs> so billy is out but um, yes, yes, we do. You have that anxious look of anticipation on your face. Um, we, we've considered, and when I say we, I'm talking about the board, uh, which is Mike, and which is Brandon, and which is Craig, and which is myself. And we've considered a number of different options. Um, I've talked with a couple of different pastors about those options, what they might be. Uh, we have kind of zeroed in on one person who we think is our primary candidate at this particular point, uh, and that would be Pastor Pat Burford, who was here sharing last Sunday. And um, it's been here a couple of times now. I've known Pat for many years, and uh, Pat is a very, very good friend of mine. And we believe, um, should the Lord will it, that. Uh, that Pat and his wife Sandy would be a very, very good fit for here. And uh, they certainly feel that way. As a matter of fact, they're trying to find a place to live over here right now. That's how serious they are. How could you possibly do the San Joaquin Valley? I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they were, that, that question has come up in the inverse when people are saying, how can you possibly leave here for Nevada? And I totally understand that question. I totally get it. But when you're talking about 
what effectively will be retirement, um, then your priorities change just a little bit. And when it comes to retirement, some of the, some of the things that we were um, concerned about, one is the cost of living. And this is a, as you all well know, this is a tough place to retire. And although I think we could retire here, it would reduce our standard of living down to basically a doghouse <laughs> with outdoor plumbing. Um, so, uh, so we we actually considered quite a few places um, as retirement options, uh, but um, Nevada kept ticking. Uh, at least this particular area of Nevada, I should say, kept ticking some of the boxes that are important to us for for that part of our life which I can talk about that with you privately any any time. Um, yeah, any other questions? Yeah. Um, so you are retiring completely? Basically, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. When there are some candidate ministers, do we have the opportunity to listen to that person's uh, message? Yes. Now, that I'm glad you brought that up, because that this brings up a couple of points that I want to help explain. One is perhaps being here twice now to preach. Um, he was here last Sunday, and then he was here, I don't know, a month or so before that. And he'll be back here again to share. I just remember I got a date coming up here in about three or four weeks when I kind of need him to be here. So um, so there's that. Yes, yes, you will. And his messages are online on our YouTube page right now. So go back and look for Pastor Pat Verfurth. Um, the, the second part of it, maybe, as part of your question, is, gee, don't we as a church get a vote on this? Don't you know? Don't we have some input into you know who's going to be the next pastor of the church? Well, the, the short answer is that we don't practice that style of church government. That's typically referred to as congregational church government, where the people you know campaign for positions and then the church votes on those positions. I don't think that that is a biblical model for church government. Um, that is my opinion, but I'm right. Um, so, um, what, what we have in this church is we have an elder-led church, and that is me and Mike and Brandon and Craig. And, but I will say this, I will say this, Mina, to your point, and this is very important, and I'm glad you brought it up. While we may not be a voting church, we would be fools to ignore what you guys have to say about this. So if you have something to say about it, whether it's about me or about Pastor Pat or about that possibility or anything else, we want to hear from everybody about everything you have to say because what you say may have a direct impact on decisions that we make. So while we are not a voting church, this is just like marriage. It's just like marriage. Guys, God appointed you the leader of the house, but if you don't listen to your wife, you're an idiot. So, um, right? I mean, so, so it is in the church as well. You know, so we want to hear from you, whether you want to bring those questions and concerns to me or to anybody else that you see up here. We invite you to do so, and we want you to do so, because your input will be crucial to our decision-making process. Did that get to your, to your question? Yeah. Is Pastor Pat the one who planted the seed? Yeah. No. No. <laughs> no, interestingly enough. Um, but it was just a whole different random thing. It was just a, a random thing, you know, that isn't random at all. Um, but uh, but that, that's, that's what it was. Um, not, not Pastor Pat. What brought you here in the first place? Also, a very, very good question. Same thing, it was the Lord. Um, I was uh, an assistant pastor of a church in Southern California doing what I'm still doing. I, not drawing a salary, cutting hair for a living. Um, we were living down there. I was teaching a home Bible study and then got on assistant pastors this this particular church, Calvary Chapel in Claremont, my hometown. And, um, and the pastor there knew that I was kind of making my way from being a home Bible study teacher to being a pastor of a church. So his task was to kind of show me what the ministry really is and what it really isn't. That was my seminary. The five years that I spent with Pastor Marco Alvarez, a great, great man of God, man of real integrity. And he's the guy that ordained me, so this is all his fault. But he's the guy that he was my seminary, the five years I spent with him. 
And then he was the one that kept saying, you know, you really need to find your own pulpit. Which I think was basically saying, you need to get out of here. Um, but um, very, I'll, I'll try to give you the short version of the story. Back in those days, there was a wing, a branch of Calvary Chapel Costa Mesa that used to put out a newsletter that went out to all the pastors of Calvary Chapels. And that newsletter would be places and individuals who were asking somebody to come and plant a Calvary Chapel in that area. And so that newsletter used to go out, and my pastor Marco used to give it to me all the time. Here, look at this, look at this, look at like, get out of here. And I actually called and talked to people in a couple of different locations. One was up in Montana, uh, outside of Bozeman. And uh, yeah, I know. I, he said, you know, the only thing you got to be good with is you got to be okay with extreme cold and isolation. I'm like, I'm not feeling this one at all. Uh, one was in what I consider to be one of the most beautiful places in the world, which is Leavenworth, Washington. Uh, if you are familiar with that area, you've been there. Uh, the Alps of the, of the state of Washington. It's, it's spectacular. But here's an interesting thing too, and this also happened here in Apple Bay, is everybody that I contacted in these different places, they all ended up um, getting divorces and having really horrible things go on in their life. The and ministers of those churches? Yeah, the, the people that were in those areas that wanted a Calvary Chapel planted there, um, their lives kind of went to pot. Uh, and then uh, my pastor gave me the newsletter again, and it said Apple Bay on it. And my wife and I, this is my first wife, um, my wife and I had been up in Santa Cruz visiting her brother, who still lives in Santa Cruz. And as we were driving from his house back to the airport in San Jose, I saw a freeway sign that said US-1, Happen Bay. And I said to my wife, Happen Bay, doesn't that sound pretty? And she said, yes. End of story. That was it. Didn't hear anything about it. It was years, a couple of years, I think. And then Marco hands me this letter, and it says, Half Moon Bay. And I'm like, hey, Half Moon Bay. And he says, why don't you call on it? I'm like, uh, you know, I didn't, honestly, friends, I didn't want to leave Southern California. I'd grown up my entire life in the city of Claremont. I owned a home there. I had great jobs. We were making plenty of money. We were in excellent shape. All my family, all of my family lived within about a two-minute walk of my house. That's, so we were, we were good, we were golden. Um, so, so I called up here, talked to the pastor of the Calvary Chapel in San Mateo, who said, we got a guy, we got a guy. We sent a guy over there, and he is starting a home Bible study over there now. I'm like, okay, fine, no problem, uh, end of story. And uh, then about a year later, my pastor Marco says, why don't you call up Doug in San Mateo and ask him about oh. Happen Bay? I'm like, they got a guy. Okay? They got a guy. There's no point in calling up there. And he said, ah, he says, I think you ought to call him anyways. I'm like, all right, fine, fine. So I called up Pastor Doug from Calvary Chapel San Mateo. I'm like, hey, Doug, good Brian having you. Uh, how's things going in Happen Bay? And he goes, funny you should call. He says, the guy that we sent over there didn't work out. You want to come up and check it out? And I'm like, oh, oh. I'm like, no, oh, you know, okay. So we flew up here, uh, met up with them in Calvary San Mateo, came over, hung out here, attended the Bible study that was going on here. And um, within, uh, I don't know, just a few short months we were here, um, which is a whole other different story for another time. But um, it, it was the Lord, genuinely that brought us here because I wouldn't have come otherwise. You know, I didn't I didn't want to. So Jim? Uh, what would be our financial expectations as to is, is he gonna be working a job like you were? Are we supporting him completely? Yeah. yeah, yeah, good question. Good question. Um he has a job. Uh both he and his wife Sandy work. Uh, he actually works for UPS. He's not a driver, but he works in one of their facilities and uh, he's already secured a position at actually any one of their facilities over here on the peninsula, but I believe he's taken a position down in Sunnydale. So he will be working full time. Uh, and we will, uh, I believe, I hope, uh, be providing him with 
uh, some financial aid uh, because of you know the sheer cost of living over here. So while not a salary, uh, yeah, we would like to help him out financially with the housing allowance, like like you guys have done for me. So he works in Sunnyvale and the commute and every yeah. Sunday. Yeah. So in he, other words, we see him only on Sunday. No, actually, that's something that we've been talking about. Um, is you know, can we expect him to be here in the midweek studies as well? And I think we can. So uh, he's younger than me. You're retired. Fifty-four, I think, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, probably. I got I got at least ten years on him. Yeah. Yeah, early fifties. Yeah, he's got he's got a couple of grown kids. For the next minister, yeah. as a present minister and also the founder of Calvary Chapel and Hampton Bay, yeah. what are you looking for the most for that the next minister's character? Of course, he has to be yeah. a Bible yeah. believer, the love of Jesus, all yeah. kinds of yeah. stuff. Yeah. Which emphasize are you looking for? You, know, yeah. like, you, know, you have been doing really good for the children in ministry. You. you know, every pastor has a different passion. Yeah. So what are you looking for the most? Yeah, yeah. Gosh, that is a good question. Um, so glad you're here today, Nick. Um, well, uh, you know, the, the, the one thing that I won't really go into is the obvious. Um, he has to meet the biblical standards of requirements for a leader of God's house. So there's that. Um, another is, you know, I know one thing I was interested in is somebody with the intellectual capacity to teach at or near the level that I do. Now, I, I don't necessarily fancy myself as an intellectual, but I know full well that when I teach, I present kind of a full plate. Um, I don't teach light or simple. I like to teach in such a way that um, challenges the new believer, uh, that convicts the unbeliever, but the seasoned believer also has something that they can learn and grow from as a result. So, uh, you know, I would want somebody who is capable of preaching and teaching at that level. Um, I would also want, obviously, somebody who loves God's people, loves church, church. You know, I love church. You know, I love the church, but I love church and I love this church. And um, so I, I would want somebody who loves church. And, um, and then uh, another very important thing to me, and I think to the board here as well, is somebody that knows and understands Calvary Chapel style of ministry. And that is not only our style of church government, but just our style of teaching, our way of doing things. And Pat is a Calvary guy. Um, Pat has taught at their school of ministry before and has a very, very strong emphasis on a couple of areas that are interesting to me, which is apologetics and evangelism. And uh, those are a couple of things that he is particularly strong on. And um, so, uh, you know, apart from the biblical standards that God lays out in his word, those are some of the things that I've been particularly interested in myself. That meets all of those things. So is he good looking like you are? <laughs> 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 Strike that from the record. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, obviously, I, I'm so very upset. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so that again may be an area where you just have to be satisfied with what you step down. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not a Paul Newman uh, like you. Yeah. So we want to know if you're well. You're not going to a sanitary room. <laughs> I am going to a mental institution. <laughs> I, am, I am about as well as I can possibly be at 64 years of age, about to turn 65. Uh, we thank God for the fact that we are healthy and that we are well. Uh, physically, if not mentally. Um, so, yes, we are both very, very well. Can you tell us about Pat and his family? Do they have kids? Yeah. How, what, how old are they? They got two kids. They're both grown out of the house. Um, and at college. At college, yeah. College, one, one's at a Christian college, one is graduated. Yeah. She's living with them. 
but I believe she's staying in the Central Valley getting a grenade and they would relocate here and then their son when he's off from school would stay with them. I'm, ask, I'm asking because so if their kids are out of the house and he does not live in Happen Bay, yeah. commuting here might be a little easier yes. because of any other, you know, he yeah. doesn't have little kids and that kind of thing. Yeah. 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 Initially we could talk about a couple of different options <coughs> for him. Um, but you know the one thing that is crucially important is trying to find a place for him to live and so I know I've already started in that process and I would encourage any of you if you you know are aware of any living situations where you know that are available for dare I even say a reasonable rate um, to to let me know and I'll I'll pass it on to him but initially he talk about, you know, if we need to start the transition process, I'll, I'll commute from there. But it's a long drive. Yeah, Lisa? Are you looking for somewhere in between? No, just something here. On the coast. Oh, on the coast. Yeah. 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 They're moving here. So not sunny though. Yeah, no, they're, no, they're, re job. they're ready to move here. Yeah. yeah. That would be his job, so if he can even do work. Yeah. And oh, so, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I thought they were going to live over there. Yeah. Okay. Sunnydale is even more expensive. No, here, now here's an interesting thing: is his commute from here to Sunnydale will be shorter than the commute he's currently doing over there. Oh, that's great. Yeah, Lisa. Does that have any formal training in education course? In education. And education. Does he have a master's in divinity? What kind of education? That's a good question. Yeah, I think he does. He went. Yeah, he went to. I didn't even ask him. <laughs> Well, that's that's more formal education than I have, because yeah. uh, I have zero. Actually, somebody asked me, "Tell me about your formal education." I said, "None. Um, I, I have no formal education. I got out of high school barely, and that was it. That was the end." You had a question. Well, I was going to ask, what his wife does, and also Deb, will you continue? <laughs> I yes, I will be retired. Um, I retired from my day job of you know I've been working since I was ten years old, and then you have the studio, so transitioning you know out of that. Um, maybe down the road, you know I will. I'm sure I you know I've already found a couple studios in Nevada, so you know probably substitute. But yeah, it's going to be nice just to take a break. Um, and his wife Sandy, she works for Covered California. And she works remotely, um, answering the phones. So it's a job she couldn't do anywhere. I just want to say, you know, yeah. I'm just happy for you. Wish you well. I'm just sorry we didn't start coming here sooner. So we can <laughs> Thank enjoy you. your sermons and sense of being here longer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you for that. Um, one of my, oh, yeah. Brian, are you retiring your drug I, you know, I don't, I, honestly, I don't know. Um, I, I'm not sure what the Lord has next for me. I'll be honest with you. I really don't. A lot of gigs and bangers. A lot of gigs and bangers. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't think of anything more depressing than a lounge gig in Vegas. Oh, God forbid. Um, yeah, I don't even like that, that atmosphere. Um, but, you know, I, I, I look to a, a, a professional cyclist. You guys know I like bikes and a professional bike racer um, who's one of my favorites, retired a few years ago. And you've probably heard this quote before, but I heard it from him. And somebody asked him, you know, 17 year career in pro bike racing, that's that's a pretty big deal. He says, they asked him, you know, are you, are you sad, you know, that it's coming to an end? And he says, you know, he says, I don't want to be sad that it's over, I want to be glad that it happened. And, um, you know, I think, I think being a Christian is the greatest adventure on planet Earth. I don't think there's anything higher, better, or wilder than walking with Jesus every single day. Um, I think there's very, very few things in this world that are as challenging and rewarding as being as being married, uh, and I and I love that. Uh, but uh, being the pastor of this church for its entire existence has has been one of the wildest rides of all. Um, the highs and the lows that go along with pastoring a church is 
it's mind-boggling. I can't even express it to you, only a pastor would know. Um, because it's been a mix of the absolute highest of highs and the absolute lowest of lows uh, and everything in between. So it's the whole spectrum. So um, uh, being the pastor of this church, it's just, I've, I've just, I've loved it. It's just been a great privilege. And uh, as I hope you all understand, uh, I don't leave it lightly. I don't treat it lightly. Uh, I don't treat myself very seriously, but I certainly treat uh, the pulpit very seriously. And so I don't, I don't walk away from it lightly. Uh, I'm not running away from it. I'm not escaping. Uh, the Lord is calling me to move away and to move on because he's got somebody else that he wants to move in to take this church to the next whatever God has planned for it. So that's what it is. Okay. Yes. The first one is, um, are you going to have an opportunity for him to come in so that the congregation can kind of do something like this and ask some questions? Or sure, I think it's a great idea. You know, just to kind of get to know him. I hadn't thought about that, but I think, I think we should do that. Follow up question. Yes. As part of this interview process, did you have a sit in the trunk set? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, tell you, I'll tell you two funny things about that. I'll tell you two funny things about that. One is he does not play the drums, but again, so does Craig, and, and so does Mike, for that matter too. So and and the drums will stay; they'll stay here. So, um, but uh, Pat, in his younger days, in his high school days, he was a break dancer. <laughs> Special treat. <laughs> I could step up in your mind, yeah. yeah. And, and if you ask him nicely, he he knows how to move on. So yeah, he knows how to move on. So he's he's an interesting guy. I mean, my father was the first Japanese professional bicycle racer. Really? That's that really interesting. Do you have any pictures of that? Do you have any pictures of him? Racing or anything? He passed away a long time ago. Yes, he has. Yeah, you have pictures? Well, I'd love to see that. I've been racing. No, this is just, my next question is, as a pastor, what do you advise every one of us when we receive a new pastor? Oh, yeah. Uh, it's brilliant. You can tell people that you have to be really yeah. pay attention and be yeah. careful, you know, yeah. stuff like this. What, I, I don't think that's yeah. what you Really, really great about. question. And for the sake of the video, I should have been repeating some of these questions. But, um, you know, what can you guys do? Right. What should you expect? Should What's do. your responsibility? Okay. Uh, I, a couple of things. Okay. One yeah. is keep attending this church. <laughs> keep attending this church. It, it, there will be, although I hope not, there will be people that since I'm not here, they don't want to come here anymore. Now, I think that's a bad idea, honestly, because you don't follow men. I'm not of Paul, I'm not of Apollos, I'm of Christ. And Christ will be glorified and preach and talk in this church. I have no question about that whatsoever. So the first thing you can do is attend, attend. Second thing you can do yeah. is you can financially support this church because the church is going to need it. And, you know, we already need it. And you guys have been as faithful beyond anything that I can tell you. Um, but the church is going to need your financial support as well as your personal support of attending the church. And then whoever's the pastor, which maybe, possibly, probably, Lord will, Pat, he's going to need all the love and the care and support and patience that you can possibly offer him. I'll tell you what you don't want to do. You don't ever want to approach him, he's going to be the new pastor, and say, you know, when Brian was here, we used to do it like this. <laughs> That's what you don't want to do, because I'm not going to be here. And what I did doesn't matter. What matters is what the Lord does. What matters is how we follow Christ. And that is what Pat will do. Um, Pat will follow Christ, and you will too. And hopefully you'll do it together here in this church. Uh, because I, I don't know of another church like this 
within a dozen or more miles. Yeah, there's Calvary Chapel on the other side of the hill. But on this side of the peninsula, we have complementary churches here, like Mariners. But we're not the same as Mariners. We're very different than Mariners. We're complementary to them, or they are complementary to us. They teach a particular way, we teach this way. So when it comes to churches like this, that teach like this, there are precious few of them. And uh, it will continue to be that. And then Pat will need all of your love, all of your care, your compassion, your patience, your patience, because you'll have to get used to hearing God's word talk regularly from somebody else, not from me. You're accustomed to hearing me. Um, you know, you're, you're so accustomed to hearing me that you literally, my voice will put you to sleep almost at any time. You listen, if you can't sleep at night, put on one of my sermons, you're out like a light. Um, so you'll adjust to hearing a new voice, but a new voice teaching you the same truths, but through his personality, not, not mine. And one thing we already know about Pat, Pat's got a great sense of humor. And, uh, and he's super, super compassionate and um, funny, and I, I love the guy. Yeah. Do you know if Pat and Sandy are looking to rent or buy or any option? Rent. 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 Yeah, rent. Because uh, like most of us, you know, trying to buy something over here is like, it's like, okay, well, if I had a million dollars, that would be a down payment, you know. <laughs> so any, any option, and I would, and I would have to say, would at least have to be a sizable. Two bedroom, one bath, if not larger. You know, because they do have kids, so the kids will want to come home occasionally. Yeah, yeah. Will you finish your life in Christ soon? <laughs> <laughs> Who else asked me that? I did. Yeah, well, <laughs> so, so at, at this particular point, um, uh, I'm sure that there that there would be a break in there somewhere, uh, but I would like to keep going on that. So that would be something that I would teach from the farther reaches of the kingdom, and uh, I would make available uh, online. So um, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, but I, I would like to. I would like to because I love I love teaching. Um, I love the series, and I'd like to see it through. We are uh, 97 sermons into that series. 97 in that series, and I don't think we're going to do so, 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 an associate pastor to continue the series? <laughs> um, uh, associate pastor where? At Bombay. Well, I, I think as, more... As a backup support, I mean... Well, he, I'm not going to be here. He's told me, no. I'm moving. It, I am not him, but, you know, online is a wide open possibility. Well, that, that's, that's true. That's true. I, I may be more pastor emeritus. Um, so if, you know, if I'm in town and, you know, Pat wants me to fill in, I'd be, I'd be happy to do it. So, yeah. You don't have to be in town. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, here, let me, let me address something maybe that's in, in somewhere buried in that question is one of the things that will be crucial to anybody else that takes over this pulpit is going to be me getting out of the way because it has to be their church, their church. This is, you know, okay, all right, we know this is the Lord's church, we know that, but this is my church, this is my church. This is all, this is where I've shed my blood, sweat, and tears, and shed some other people's blood, sweat, and tears here also in this church, this is my church. This church has been my entire life for 23 years, and even a few years prior, you know, just trying to move up here. So it, it's, it's, it's been me, it's, it's got me all over it, and we need to get the me off of it. You know, we need, we need to disinfect and scrub, and, and we need it, it needs to be the next guy's church, no longer mine. And then there's gonna come a day, just like, <coughs> friends, this is, this is important, there's people in this church that never, right now, that never knew my first wife. Never knew her. In spite of how instrumental she was in the founding of this church, some of you never even met her. You don't even know her. There's going to come a day when there's people in this church, you say something about Brian and I go, we don't even know who that is. Because they're going to come as a result of the new ministry that's going on here. 
And they would say, Brian, don't even know. Never even heard of him. And in a way, I kind of look forward to that day because then it's then it becomes the man who's here. It's it's his now, not mine. So yeah. So the best thing I can do is just just get out of the way. So step aside. Any other questions, friends? Yeah. Well, I just want to add, I think it's a good idea to maybe have him come and talk to the congregation. Oh, I think that's a great idea. Um, but I'm, because Pat and I do the children's ministry, I'm just wondering, uh, do you think he'll want to change some of that? or? Well, I think the first thing he's going to do is he's going to rely very heavily on you guys, on who you are and what you do, what you provide in this church. He's going to need you more than he understands and so your participation and your support with him is going to be crucial uh, to him becoming the pastor of this church so um, I, I love the idea of having him come in and, and I'm going to talk to him about that so we can do a meeting just like this but with him up here so you guys can grill him just grill him so um, yeah Cindy you want to I just want, want you to know that even though you'll be far away, you'll remain in our hearts. Thank you. Thank you. And as you will as well. Um, again, 23 years of my life here, so this is not a small thing. And again, not something that we've taken lightly in our prayers and uh, in our seeking of the Lord and our desiring to walk with Him. But, uh, when you walk with the Lord, sometimes God does stuff that you don't expect, and this is this is it. This is part of it. So we're following Him, and He's leading us there. So that's what we're going to do. Yeah, I mean, Ryan, I'm so happy you have you find the baby. Yeah. Because after you lost the child, every time I saw you, you are getting a sinner, the sinner, the flat, flat. <laughs> you know, I really worried about you. But now, that is complete. Good, good work at the Thank you. I, I can tell you that they, back in those days, um, there was another uh, lady in the church who took me aside one Sunday morning and said, um, Pastor Brian, we think you're too young to be single. We think you need to get married. How about her? <laughs> Stop. Stop. Don't point. Don't point. You just randomly pick somebody. How about her? <laughs> you know that thank you very, very much, Mina. You know, I've been uh, once again blessed beyond comprehension because both times that I've been married, I left it up to the Lord. And so when God picks... He does not fool around it. And uh, so I've been, I mean, I think to be married to a, a good and a godly and a beautiful woman once in life is a pretty big deal. I've done it twice. So I feel pretty pretty good about that. So um, thank you. Anybody else? Hey, Brian, can I just touch on oh, yes. Just to follow up on your question about any changes that might come up. This goes for anything in the church. Any ministry, any any important function of this church, that's the function of the board and the church leadership. No one man can come here and just say, we're not doing it your way anymore. The board's got to vote on it. And that's what the blessing of having Brandon, Craig, myself, our wives, Judy, the leadership of this church, we have to agree upon it. And we have been here for a little longer than a cup of coffee, so we kind of have to run here. Yeah. How we like it as just... And we're just talking about the pure, uh, I don't want to call it the business of the church, but that's really what it is. We have input on that. So to maybe quell any fears about somebody coming in and just being a tyrant, everybody that's been in the professional world knows the, the, the lousiest leaders are the ones that were just promoted and they come in and they got something to do and they start changing everything without observing first. We won't let that happen. And we will prayerfully advise whomever takes over the pulpit to make sure that that doesn't happen. That, boy, that well, is a really, really good point. Are, are you, is there going to be another board meeting? or Because I know this is just a kind of a one-topic thing, mm -hmm. but we have some things about the children's church we'd like to present to the board. Awesome. You awesome. know what? That's a great... Um, let's talk about that. You know, because we take... We have our board meetings. We have agenda items that we discuss. 
you can talk to us anytime about ideas like that, and then we'll bring it to the board. You know, you, you want to tell any of us any ideas, let's talk about it. It doesn't need to be a formal meeting, and then we'll bring it to the board, and we'll, okay. and we'll discuss yeah, it. Yeah, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm still here, too. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, you know, that, that you bring up a really good point, Pam, and, and one thing that um, I, think, I think Pat would supply here is a lot of continuity. Uh, so that everything looks and feels pretty much like it does now, you know, uh, with the possible exception of you no know, growth, you know. Um, I, I think I think Pat would do an excellent job of maintaining this style of ministry that we have here. But again, you know, this is what leadership is for. You know, leadership is to help with that continuity. So what does he do right now? You mean for work? Yeah, he works for UPS. Is he minister in any church? Pardon? Is he a minister of any college? He was. He um, was. Yeah, so Pat's got a kind of a, a list of things that he's done, including starting churches and pastoring churches. He's also taught in Bible college as well, too. So he's got a little bit more uh, academic background than I do. Um, so he's done a little bit of everything right now, but he's been laying low just the last couple of years because he and um, uh, Sandy had a couple of health issues that they needed to deal with. And then, of course, COVID kind of knocked the stuffing out of everybody. So he's been laying low the last couple of years, and, uh, and I knew that. And uh, so I contacted him and said, hey, you know, I know you've been on the down low here for a bit. You want to talk about this? And he was like, I don't know. So we, Pat and I talked, gosh, dozens of times on the phone, long, long conversations about him, about his history and about this church. And uh, so I've spent a lot of time with him on the phone and he's, he's ready. He's, I, I would be very, very happy to see him here. Yeah. Let me just add something kind of on the tail end of what you said is, you know, Calvary Chapel, I came here in 2009, and I had been to every church that worships God in the whole area um, over a number of years, and I knew I was looking for something, but I didn't know what it was, and I actually met Brian in Dewey, was invited here, my mom and I started coming here, and in this church we found exactly what I was looking for, and that's just that we teach straight from God's Word. You know, and so, you know, as someone who's tried to, we're not trying to sell our church, I don't do that. But, you know, I came here and I found not only were we teaching, Brian teaching straight from God's word week after week after week after week, but I found a place that just felt like it led with love. And that would be my one thing that I would say about if it's Pastor Pat or whoever it is, that if we lead with love, you know, that's something that people who come and visit here, that's the biggest comment we hear, is that they left and they felt loved. You know, they felt like they were home. And so, you know, I, I just, uh, I really encourage, I just pray so much that this doesn't, you know, this change doesn't have people leaving the church, but that more will come. You know, that we will remain that church that all these years, Brian and, and uh, Carol and Deb have all put into making this, you know, that kind of a place. So, you know, my two cents. Thank you. Can I, I'd like to make a comment. Yeah. Um, I think along with what Judy just said, that it was fairly profound for me when Pat's first message was on unity, that this is about being unified and using John chapter 17 and talking about what that meant. It just felt so strongly based on loving each other, irrespective of our differences, our backgrounds, our cultural issues. He was so good and right on in that message that I felt, not knowing that he was a candidate at that time, that when I found out he would, could be a candidate, I was very impressed with that by the Holy Spirit. And that's, again, another thing that we have to reiterate is that every board member and every person involved in leadership in this church, including the worship team, has been committed to operating uh, under the power and leading of the Holy Spirit. So I think it's really important to know that that's been what has bathed every discussion, every issue, who might be a possible candidate, and what, of course, Deb, together with Brian are doing, is that they're being led by the Holy Spirit. And you guys need to know, we affirm that, 
and we support that, and that's what this decision is based on. Absolutely, amen. Absolutely. Um, again, you know, this board, this leadership, is exactly what we need for right now. So they're going to be the ones that ensure this kind of continuity, uh, the strength and the compassion of the leadership here is going to ensure the continuity moving forward. So there's that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just want to say we're sad to see you go. We've had three wonderful pastors in our life together, and you're one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I, that's a blessing. I, I couldn't ask for anything more than that. So, and then I have one other comment, completely yeah. off topic. Yes. We ahead. played a trivia game on First Samuel today in Children's Church, and the yeah. winning team won pizza. Can do the parents mind if they have that next week? So um, just to wrap up there, there's still there's still some some months to go here, so things aren't things are moving faster than than I would like, but not that fast. So um, don't don't worry about that. We'll keep you guys posted. Um, now now uh, I will say that um, you know we didn't Deb and I didn't want to start saying uh, anything to anybody uh, apart from the leadership of this church and our own families. Nobody else knows we wanted you guys to know first. So that was our effort. You guys know first. And obviously, there's a lot of people that call this church home that aren't here today. So you can feel free to talk about it. You can spread the word if you want. This video, we're going to post it online uh, later so that those that couldn't be here uh, can see uh, the video uh, of what we've talked about here today. And uh, now I've got to start talking to my clients <laughs> uh, at work. And um, yeah, people are like, well, you know, I don't care if you don't pastor, who's going to cut my hair? <laughs> it's like, wow, okay. Uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> so um, there will be that whole discussion. So, uh, but we're starting to do that now this week. Again, we wanted you guys to be the first to know. Uh, so now we've got to start dealing with all of that. So um, that said, we are moving forward, and uh, any time any one of you uh, wants to talk with any one of us personally uh, or privately, uh, whatever that means, uh, happy to talk with you, email, text, phone call, in person, whatever, it doesn't matter, happy to talk with any of you, answer any questions you might have moving forward, okay? Pam went through more hairdressers than preachers. <laughs> it's hard to find a hairdresser. I know. Believe me, I believe me, I know. Um, at least a good one. Uh, yeah, it's a good, a good one. one. And I'm I'm the last of, of those. So, <laughs> so um, all that being said, then let's let's close in a word of prayer. Right? Gracious God above, we look to you in all things, for all things. And we always trust and believe that you will lead us faithfully. You will lead us wisely. Now help us to follow you equally as faithfully. To follow you loyally, first and foremost. Even when you take us on a turn, or even when things feel a little unsettled, Lord, we trust you are in charge. This is your house. These are your people. It's your word. And we trust that you are going to do what is best for this church always. So, Lord, we do pray for, if it's going to be Pat, Sandy, we pray all of your best blessings and provision for them. Lord, you have already supplied so generously for me and Deb. And we know that you'll do the same for this church, your church your house, your people. So we look forward. As a matter of fact, Lord, we're kind of excited about what you're going to do next here with this church. We can't wait to see. We can't wait to be a part of it, to play our role in it, whatever it might be. doesn't take long. So, Lord, as we look forward, we're kind of excited. So thank you, Lord, 
for your gracious goodness, your provision, your faith, your patience, your love, your care, your concern for each and every one. Now bless us as we go and process all this new information. We trust that you'll help us because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you so much for being here.